Hi, welcome. Welcome this afternoon to To The Point. It's our new exciting program. Very relevant topics, and we've got a really relevant topic this afternoon. Don't go away. Just, just you keep watching now because we've got a really important topic. We're going to be talking about deception in the church. Deception in the church, and we obviously need an expert for that, and it's certainly not me. So right beside me, I've got some of you know very well, Doug Harris, of course, to talk about deception in the church. Hello, Hello, Doug. Hey, Richard. <laughs> Lovely to have you on again. Thank you. I enjoy coming in. Yeah, it's only a short walk from the office, so we're all right. <laughs> and we're going to be talking this, this afternoon about deception in the church. We are. So just uh, before we get in all these uh, really interesting questions, um, I know you're really quite an expert on all these, all these different cults and things. How long have you been involved in all that? Um, nearly 30 years now. 30 years. Nearly 30 yeah. years. And yeah, I, I mean, it, it varies and, and there's always something new. I mean, even today in, in, in the press, there's this uh, group in California that, that are missing, that they're afraid this cult group, which is mainly one family, are, are going to commit suicide. Uh, you right. know, exactly. So there's always something going on. And, right. and the, the, there are things that are going on in what is obviously known in a group like that that probably has little if anything to do with any recognized church whatsoever right but then over the years yeah. we've had to deal with a number of issues which have to do with i suppose using the word church on its broadest terminology sure. but especially with groups that maybe own the name of jesus maybe talk in the name of jesus and and folks that don't know any better would actually think they are christian right now, before we go, as I say, before we get involved in all this, you have a charity, don't you? The Reach Out Trust. Reach Out Trust, yeah. So I'm, I'm very impressed with your charity. But can you tell the viewers a little bit about the Reach Out Trust? Yeah, I, I mean, the Reach Out Trust has been going, well, for nearly 30 years now, uh, as I say. And, and, and it began because I saw a whole group of Jehovah's Witnesses going into Twickenham Rugby Ground. That's right. And I asked the question, did they believe in the same Jesus as me? What were they not? And if they didn't, if I came to the conclusion they didn't, if I came to the conclusion that I felt some of their doctrines weren't what I read in Scripture, what would I do about it? Yeah. And so what I decided, I, I, I came, did come to that conclusion for reasons, and we got books and yeah. stuff on as to why I did. Uh, um, we began to reach out to them, not primarily to tell them they were wrong. I, I think so often today we, we get the stage where we're saying, you're wrong. Yes. Whereas what we like to say mm. is there's something better. Mm. And so, yeah, and today we will be underlining what, what is wrong, but I think only mm. along with what is right. Mm. And what can I do about it? Yeah, because yeah. we don't just want to condemn, we, we want to encourage and yeah. we want to set if I, free. If I may say, I've noticed this in your movies and the books as well, that you have a very gentle attitude towards, you know, towards I, those yes, people. I, I, because I, yes. you know, what I was going to say, I mean, some, of them, some other ministries, they have a very condemning attitude, whereas mm. actually you don't, do you? No, uh, because I, I, I work on the basis, yes, I believe they're wrong, otherwise I wouldn't be dealing with it. Yeah. But just shouting and screaming at them they're mm. wrong actually does no good whatsoever no. Um, most of these groups have been taught that they will be persecuted in some way or another yes, that's true. and therefore if I come along and shout and scream at them they immediately think I'm being persecuted they yeah. were right yeah. whereas if I come along with love and yeah. seek to get alongside them and say I understand what you're saying there but what about this? Yeah. Uh, suddenly it's a different attitude. Yeah. And, and I will seek to befriend these people and I yeah. will seek to... Now, they don't always want me to do that. No, no, no. no, <laughs> uh, no but no. I will certainly seek. And, and to me, it is the way, to me, it's the way that Jesus did it. I'm always talking about John 4, the way he reached out to the woman of Samaria. To me, it's the way that he did it. And to me, I believe it's the way we should do it. Others disagree, but that's the way for me. So just, just taking up that point, I mean, it's not scripted, but the woman in Samaria, just yes. how do you read that particular? Well, how I read, I mean, the, the woman was a Samaritan adulteress. Right. Okay? No question about it. Yeah. Jesus knew that. Yeah. So when he came along to her, the way that many of us would have approached her would have been to look at her and say, you Samaritan adulteress, repent or else. Yes. Huh? Yeah. Um, he didn't. He said, can I have a drink of water? Yeah. <laughs> uh, and immediately what he actually does then is... He then starts talking about living water. 
Yes. And what he does, he compares the the dead water, the transient water yes. that she has with the living water that he has. Right. And and so what he's doing is showing her there's something better. Which is exactly what you do. Exactly. Well, and, and the reason yeah. I do it is because I so feel the Lord did So you've copied him? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. Who better to copy Richard? <laughs> well, that's right. But I mean, uh, yeah, I hadn't... Yeah. Sort of, yeah. And, and, and then, you see, then he still does it. He, he's still got to show her what was wrong. Hmm. Even after he shows her there's something better. But he still doesn't go and say, you're a Samaritan adulteress. He asks her a question, basically. Why don't you go and call your husband? Yeah. And that, to me, is where we come along. A, show them something better. Two, seek to ask questions rather than accuse. Yeah. And I believe that's what Jesus did. Yes, there were times when the religious leaders of the day he was very much stronger with. Hmm. And maybe, yes, there's a case that if I ever were able to talk to the actual leaders of any of these groups, yes. maybe I should be stronger with them. But to, as it were, the ordinary man and woman in the hmm. street... Hmm. I will act the way that Jesus acted. Yeah. And that's how I well, feel I think we should I, be. I, I, I think it's great, actually, because, mm. you know, re just seeing your movies and you've, read, you've written some books. Eight books, is it? I think? Something like that. I eight lost books. count. Yeah. yeah, well, eight books. <laughs> but it, it comes over quite, quite strongly. You, mm. you, you don't condemn these people. No. And I think that's a no. very important point, actually. And it's interesting, over the years, we, we, we have been criticised from both sides. We've been criticised uh, from uh, certain parts of the church saying we're not strong enough. Oh, really? And we've been criticised from certain the cult saying we're too strong. <laughs> <laughs> and here's poor us trying to walk down the middle. But there we are. That's the way it goes. So welcome, uh, if you've just joined us, uh, is To The Point. The programme's called To The Point, and we're talking about deception and in the church. Now, if you've got any texts or emails you'd like to send us, I'm sure there'll be some details coming up on the screen right now. Just send us some texts and emails. And we do have an expert sitting right beside me who you know very well. His name is Doug Harris, Director of Operations at Revelation TV. And we'll try and get him to answer your questions. But we'll ask him straight away, deception in the church, Doug, how would you actually define deception? Basically, deception is trying to persuade somebody that something is false, you know, the, 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 or, or, or something that is false. Right. Um, and so you, you take the, as it were, the original, you twist it, you turn it, and you produce something else from it. And by your argument, by your style, by your um, whatever means you have the, yes. to, to give, you persuade that person, it's not this, it's this. Yes. Um, and sometimes you do that knowingly, and that's very dangerous, i.e. there are people that know what they say is wrong. Yes. But there are other times when people have accepted hmm. these things which are wrong, and they, they are deceiving, but they are actually deceived themselves. And so mm. it, it, it's, it's a different motive. It's a different reasoning yeah. behind it. Yeah. But basically, deception is always trying to show something that is false, trying to really say it's true. Sure. Um, and it's been going on ever since time began, really. Yeah. Right, well, we've already talked about John chapter 4, about Jesus' approach to, say, the S Samaritan woman. But um, I, I think you're probably going to be wanting to tell us about other biblical examples of deception and, you know, perhaps you'd enlarge on that, really. Yeah, I, I think one of the easiest passages, first of all, for us to understand what it is, is Acts chapter 20. OK. Um, Acts chapter 20, to, towards the end of Acts chapter 20, Paul is uh, talking to... Uh, the the elders in Ephesus. He was he was on his way to Jerusalem. He, he gets to uh, Miletus, and he calls the elders, the, the Ephesian elders, to him. Right. Now I find the Ephesian church very very interesting, because in in the first letter to the Ephesians, i.e., what we know as Ephesians, yeah. um, you you get some of the most tremendous. Um, understanding and, and revelation of the church and God's eternal purpose and all of that. 
When you get to the second letter of Ephesians, i.e. the one that Jesus wrote to the church in Ephesus in Revelation chapter 2, seven letters oh, to right, the churches. Right. Okay, right. Well, That's interesting. Yeah, I, I can I'm, see I'm, you. Yeah. Yeah. I was just well, scratching my head here. Yes, I'm well, just, I'm just yeah, you're you know. beginning to wonder yes, if I wasn't I, trying to deceive you, weren't you? <laughs> no, I'm with you now. Sorry. <laughs> my, when, my clock works a bit slower than yours. But, but when, when you get to that one, it talks about leaving their first love and it talks about being careful because Jesus will remove his presence from them. Yeah. And that is exactly what did happen eventually if you look yeah. at the history of yeah. Ephesus. Okay. Yeah. What you get here is the part in between. Right. And, and it's very interesting because Paul calls them and on the basis, he, he lays the foundation, I taught you everything, um, you know, I, I, I share with you the whole counsel of God. So he's laying it down that I shared all the truth, all the reality with you, he was there for at least 18 months, communicating, sharing with them all, 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 all the way through. And then he gets to uh, this stage and down in verse 29, he says this, I know that after my departure, savage wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. So first of all, he says, mm -hmm. there will be those that come in from without mm -hmm. and they will be looking to destroy the flock. But then very, very interestingly, he says this, and men from among yourselves. Mm. Now, I'm not saying this. God's word is saying it. And we have to be so aware mm. that God has warned us about this. From among yourselves will rise, and men from among yourselves will rise up with, as this translation puts it, devious doct deviant doctrines to lure the disciples into following. Now, first mm. of all, mm. they are men that would be already recognized in the church. Right. That be, that's the first thing. It's that's interesting. And it's, yeah. it's men that are recognized in the church. The second thing that I want to underline, it says, it will seek to draw away the disciples, mm. i.e. those that are committed to Christ. Mm. That's what the whole mm. purpose is. Mm. And, and it, they do this by deviant doctrines. Now, this Greek word is very, very interesting. Go here. on, then. Interesting. It's, yeah. it's, it, it, it's the word that, that, that in some tr translations is called deceptive doctrines. Right. When you were young... <laughs> Many, many years ago. Thank you. For, you. for you and me, did you ever go on onto the pier at Brighton or somewhere and go into one of those Hall of Mirrors? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And you know very well, you used to walk around that Hall of Mirrors and it was the same you yeah. looking in every mirror. That's right. But in every mirror, you were different. That's right. Okay. Very. And, <laughs> and if you were thin, you liked the fat ones. If you were small, you liked the tall ones and so on and so forth. Yeah. In every case, it was you but the image mm. that came out was twisted. Yes, it was. Mm. That's the word. In other mm. words, it starts with something that's original, but what it actually projects is a deviant of that, a twisting mm. it's very of that truth. It? Now, that's the word there. So, in other words, uh, Paul is contrasting. You, if, you, if you read uh, uh, mm. Acts 20, 17 to the end and really think about it, Paul's contrasting there. I taught you the whole counsel of God. In yeah. other words, he didn't just take bits and pieces. Yeah. So often in the church today, mm. we take bits and pieces. What do I fancy preaching about today? Yes, you know, that's right. Instead of going through systematically and dealing with everything. He dealt with everything. Here are these ones coming that would take some of those very doctrines mm -hmm. that Paul preached, sure. but take them out of the context of everywhere else mm. and twist them and turn them so that they are expressed mm. in something different. Sure. Now, we have that going on within the church today. Mm. And we need to be alive to that. And, and I, I don't want to point fingers, basically, and we might use one or two illustrations as we go through today. But in the end, it, my desire today isn't to point fingers. I guess my, what I really would desire mm -hmm. out of today, Richard, is that as Christians, we wake up that this is going on, mm -hmm. not simply to look at everybody, oh, mm -hmm. nothing to do with them, <laughs> yeah, look at them, but that we can begin to test things out. Sure. We can begin to say, is that twisted? Sure. Is that truth? Is that real? Mm. And we've been warned in Acts chapter 20. Mm. 
yes. um, as well as in other places. But I, I always feel Acts chapter 20, because it deals with the Ephesian church, what they were before, yeah. what they ended up to. Why did they end up the way they ended up? Because of that. So I suppose another way of describing what you came out of there is like a distortion of the truth. Yes. Would that be fair? That's a fair, distort, absolutely. Taking yes. a particular thing and distorting it and taking it out of context. Yes, yes. Which would give added sort of emphasis to take the whole of the scriptures yes. and the whole of the teaching of the whole of the scriptures. Yes. Because uh, not that my knowledge is as good as yours, it certainly isn't, but it seems to me some of these sects, they, sort of, they take a little bit and they you know, make a whole doctrine out of this little bit, which leaves the whole of the rest. You know. a absolutely. Uh, uh, and often you major on the minor issues. Yes. Um, now, we, you see, yes, we, we can look at what we call sex and what we call cults, and we can yeah. see them doing it. Yeah. But we've also got to look at ourselves and say, you know, am I doing this? Yeah. Is, I, I, am I making sure that I put everything back into context? Can, can I give you another yeah, illustration? Can, do, yeah. can we go yeah. right back to the beginning, to Genesis? Yeah. Um, uh, now, uh, anybody that's watched my programme will know that when Tom Jacko gets on, this is what he does. And we get back into Genesis and we never get out again. But uh, okay. I'll try and get out again. <laughs> no, that's but, right. Because you're, you're doing fine. What, what we get to, of course, is, is, is Satan's first contact with... I uh, knew you were going to come to this, but yeah. you carry on. <laughs> and mm. you see, and, 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 you know, and, and immediately the serpent was more cunning, okay? So here we have this word cunning. Yeah. Uh, again, somebody that's able to twist, somebody that's able to take things and turn them around. And we have people like that yeah. today. And he said to the woman, did God really say... And I mean, and that's it, isn't it, Richard? That is I it, mean, yeah. right back at the beginning, did God really, really say that? Yeah, yeah. Um, and we yeah. have to answer that question time and time again. Mm. And one of the things I found when I got involved with the cult ministry mm. was I'd had a great biblical upbringing up until mm. that point, mm. um, but it threw me back onto the Word of God again and again. Which is no bad thing. No, absolutely. No. Uh, it's a very because as mm. As the deviant came out, as, as the mm. distortion came up, yeah. I had to go and say, well, what was the original? Yeah. And, and then look what he does, you see. Mm. The, the woman said, he said, did you really say you can't eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, we may eat from the trees of the garden, but about the fruit of the tree in the middle of the garden, God said, you must not eat it or touch it uh, or you will die. No, you will not die. You know? mm. And immediately mm. now, Mm. Um, we're, we're, we're covering. One of the interesting things that Satan has done by asking that question, can you eat from the trees of the garden? Now notice where it goes to. The answer isn't, yes, we can eat from the abundance of the trees in the garden. Mm. The answer comes down to, there's one we can't do. So it's the same thing, it's narrowing yeah, it down. It narrows yeah, down. Yeah. And that's what Satan wants to do all mm. the time, mm. to narrow down to what you can't do mm. instead of to see what you can do. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and, it's, and, and of course he goes on, no, you will not die. And he, he tells a half-truth all the way through. Yeah. And, and immediately that's, that's exactly what happens. And, mm. and Satan has not changed. Satan has not changed. That's what he's doing today. So he asks us the question, oh, come on, did God really say that? Surely what he meant was. Mm. And we have people today teaching what they think God meant instead of what he says. Right. And we take things uh, out, out, of, uh, uh, out of context. <laughs> I know I'm talking too much. No, so. no, you're let, doing... Let, let me like, no, we've come to, be, we've come, we've come to learn. <laughs> Look, um, if you've just joined us, we're having a really interesting time here. I hope you're enjoying it too, Listening but we're having me. a great time here <laughs> because, um, you know, uh, it's not an area, frankly, that I'm particularly knowledgeable about. I'm very interested in it, but I'm not knowledgeable about it. That's why I purposely asked Doug to be here, and he is a very important guest. And he is an expert on all these various cults, and I'm really actually learning something here. Right, let's carry on. And by the way, if you've got any texts or emails, do send them in, and we'll try and get Doug to answer them. So let's come back to this deception thing. Is it always obvious? By very nature of it, no. No. By the very nature of deception, no. And 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 and, and the way that that it's um, the way that it's put forward, the very art of deception hmm. is so that you are not deceived. Yeah. 
Yeah. That, that you don't know you're being deceived. Yeah, so um, and that's the very art of And that's of the subtlety of it all, yeah. really, isn't it? I mean, it? you've seen, you know, the three coins, you know, and you, you've seen all those things that are, that, 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 that are going on around and, and, and all those things that are happening. It's a sleight of hand. Sure. So you think you're OK when you're actually not OK. And, and, and that's exactly it. So, no, we don't know we're always deceived. But what, what I will come back to again and again is to say this, that we need to be aware that potentially we can be. And therefore, we don't just take on everything we hear. You get the latest thing coming out. You get the latest gimmick coming out. You get the latest teaching coming out. And what, what we need to do is, is to say, hang on a minute, is this right? Yeah. And we need to be able to go back and put it into context. We need to ask the questions, is this what God's word says? We need to ask the questions, is this where, it, you know, wh where does this come from? Yeah. So that because, because the deception is not obvious, you've got to peel away the onion layers. Yeah. And get down to the, and read the footnotes as well as the, the main text. <laughs> well, I want to encourage you here. Uh, somebody here says, uh, send a te text. I know the Holy Spirit is being twisted into into a spiritual spirituality that is distorted, why doesn't Jesus, Jesus judge those doing the devious doctrines? Good show, by the way. This is the encouragement bit. Good show, by the way. You really know what you're talking about. <laughs> Christina. Thank you, Christina. I agree. It's a very good show. <laughs> thank you, Doug. It's a very good show. Let's carry on. So, well, can, can I ask that question? Why, why doesn't God do it? He will do it. Oh, right. Um, but, you see, the, the, the reason you have to wonder is question, if God stepped in and judged everything today, yeah. there will be millions that wouldn't be saved. Well, that's right. And therefore, sometimes God holds back. Hmm. And, and he's given us the tools hmm. not to be deceived. He's given us the ability not to be deceived. Uh, because why? Because some of these people who are today either themselves deceived or indeed are doing the deception, before Jesus returns, they're going to be saved. Yeah. Now, if he came back tonight, they would not be. Yeah. It's, the wheat, so, it's the wheat and the tares business. It, and so, it? yeah, yeah. It, and it, it mm. is. And so mm. it's the patience of God, which, of course, you and I don't have, because we were... <laughs> <laughs> Type um, A personalities. And, and again, <laughs> it goes back mm. to what we were saying at the beginning. Why mm. do you reach out in love? For the very same yeah. reason. Well, well actually, since you've you. raised that thing, um, it's slightly out of context okay, no, out of turn, but it doesn't matter. You've actually raised these things. How can we be sure we're not personally deceived? Okay. I think I know what you're going to say, but please say yeah. it. <laughs> I, I mean, the, the, the first thing I would say is this. Okay, as a young Christian, let, let's go through our life, but as a young Christian who is mm. just recently come to the Lord, no biblical background, no understanding, um, get to know the Lord as soon as you can. But one of the things that, that he mm. does, the Holy Spirit just gives us within us that, hey, I'm not quite sure of this. If you get that, make sure as a young Christian you're talking to other people. You're asking them. Mm. Make sure of your safety because you might not be able at that point to clearly discern for yourself. Very good point. Well, it's right. So Very good number point. one, that's it. You progress in getting to know the Lord yourself, okay? Yeah. And so you get to know more and more. You, you get into the Word and the Word gets into you. Mm. And, and, and you get your Bible plan. We did this on my show last week. Get your Bible plan to read through the year. Sure. Get, get it so that you're reading the Scriptures on, 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 on a regular basis. And then what begins to happen then is you begin to get a, an overview of the sure. whole of God's Word. That's right. So when somebody comes and says, oh, by the way, Jesus was just a man. Yeah. <laughs> you say, well, hang on a minute. Mm. You know, and they, they might quote a scripture or two that seems to say that. Mm. You say, well, hang on a minute. I was reading the other day this scripture that clearly shows he's not. Now, they both can't be right because the That's Bible right. doesn't contradict right. itself. So it's then that you start asking the questions. Because often mm. the people doing the deception are very nice people. Mm. Many of them are very genuine people who are themselves deceived. Yeah. And so it's, it really is knowing the Word of God and getting to know the Word yeah. of God, listening to the Holy Spirit yeah. within. It, it, in 1 John chapter yeah. 2, the, the word anointing is thrown around quite a lot today. But if you actually look in 1 John chapter 2, 
the biblical use of that word anointing is the reason we are all anointed is to know the difference between good and evil. Sure. And mm. knowing the ministry of the Holy Spirit in our lives, as I put it, sometimes the warning bell goes off. Mm. We don't necessarily know why. We don't necessarily all that know all that's right and all that's wrong at that point. But the warning bell goes off. Mm. We That's go very back, good. We have a look. We so we could put, could we broadly put it under discernment, really? Discernment is, yeah. Uh, broadly, if, broadly. Broadly. I mean, yeah. if, if people understand mm. that word. I mean, d d discernment, for instance, you, you, you do have a gift, which is the gift sure. of discernment. Yeah. Um, and in other words, here is a supernatural work of the Holy Spirit mm. that would come and would say to you, wait a minute, whoa, that's not yeah. right. Mm. But discernment is also where we check it out for ourselves. Yeah. Um, and I I again, in, in, in 1 Thessalonians 5, which is the, I, I always think is, the, is so interesting with this, that um, where you have um, this uh, verse in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, you see, it's, um, uh, it, it's put into the, the context, verse 19, don't stifle the Spirit, so it's put into the works of the Holy Spirit. Don't despise prophecies. Right. In other words, we're right. not against the gifts at all. Mm. But test all things. Yes. And hold fast that which is good. Mm. Now, if you hold fast that which is good, mm. you've already determined that some of those <laughs> things aren't good. Mm. And so discernment mm. is testing. You take the words, you bring them back to the Word of God. Does it fit with the whole counsel of God? That's Very good. So welcome again, if you've just joined us. We're talking about de uh, deception in the church. And Doug has just made some three very important points. And he did actually say this was for new Christians, but actually I would actually say it's for all Christians, including me. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the first thing is, uh, when we come across some apparently new doctrine, the first thing is to check it out against the scripture. And by that, but Doug was making the point that we need to have a good knowledge, a good grounding of the whole of the scriptures. That was the first point. And the second point is be in conversation about things you're not sure about with other people. And that's what I'm always doing myself, actually, is I'm always finding things I'm not sure about. <laughs> I'm, I'm very close friends with uh, my own pastor called Roger. And I ring him up probably three or four times a week because right. I'm not sure about things and right. I want his opinion. Yep. And today I've actually asked you about some, th yep. some things that I'm not sure again. again. <laughs> but that's, that's right, isn't it? Absolutely. And, and that's what fellowship is about. That's yes. what fellowship is about. And the third thing is to use discernment. And, and, and you know, those alarm bells do go off sometimes. Yes. I mean, I'm not director of operations on Revelation TV, but I'm, and you don't know how to answer this question, but I bet you sometimes get people who want to come on this, this program on television, you just, little warnings go off. But you don't have to answer that. Uh, well, well, no. I mean, the simple answer to that is yes. I'm yeah. not, not going to say who, what or where. No, of course you're not. But, yeah. but it is, that is the answer. Yeah. Be be because, mm. um, you know, mm. you have to be careful. Yeah. I, I mean, as a station, I mean, you see, there, there, there are all sorts of, if I can put it this, flavours of the truth. And, yeah. And, yeah. and that's all fine. But yeah. the moment you get beyond the truth mm. and into this deception, we do, as you know, uh, 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 the management, especially of the station, has a responsibility sure. of who we allow, as it were, into the pulpit. Absolutely. And, and yeah. as indeed every pastor, every pastor of every church does. does. Yes, yes, well, I know my own pastor, Roger. Absolutely. He's very, very careful who speaks yes. at the front. Yes. Just a bit of encouragement for you here, uh, some texts. Uh, Hi, Doug and Dr. Richard. Praise God. I have just led my support worker to the Lord to rejoice with me, another soul in Ooh. the kingdom. Amen. Amen. Having a job getting on, sorry. Um, Dr. Richard website, love Chrissy. Sorry about that, you're having trouble getting on my website. It's freechristianteaching.org. If you can't get onto that one, try the other one. It's finalfrontier.org.uk. But normally there isn't a problem getting onto it, freechristianteaching.org. Okay, we've, we've got it here, freechristianteaching.org. So I don't know why you can't get on it. It's got a big bandwidth. Okay, let's move on. Can it sometimes be the case of some, that someone is deceive, deceiving themselves and not deliberately deceiving others? Um, yeah, I, 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 I've answered this partially, and let me, because the way the question, I, I need to um, rephrase the question as well. So let me yeah. answer it as it is. Is it the case in something that people are deceiving themselves? Hmm. Yes. But that's interesting. They are deceiving themselves. Yes. Um, and it's very important that we don't deceive ourselves. In other words, we 
can want something so much hmm. that we actually say, God wants me to do that. I, I was going to hmm. share this illustration earlier on, and hmm. it, it came in, in, in church uh, yesterday. Um, uh, somebody was in, um, on, on jury service, hmm. and uh, they were saying, I mean, without saying anything about the case, they didn't, but in, in, in the um, communication that was going on, some people were saying, um, well, of course, it could be that thus and thus was so. In other words, they weren't just taking the evidence, they were mm. adding to it. Mm. And the point came out that we can only take the evidence. Mm. Mm. And sometimes we can read God's word mm. and it's clear, this is the evidence. But we don't like that. Okay. So we say, ah, but God wouldn't mind if... <laughs> and we can deceive ourselves into doing something or being something that is against the Word of God. Yeah. Now, that is very, very difficult to deal with. Yeah. But some people have to lovingly go to those people and say, look, yeah. I know what you feel, I know why I say it, but God's Word communicates this. Yeah. Okay? And so that's deceiving yourselves. Sure. Are there others who have been deceived by others? In other words, they don't start out to deceive themselves. That's how I would slightly rephrase that question. Okay. Yes, there are. Hmm. There are many people in, in, in sects and cults today hmm. who were looking for something. They were looking for God. They were hmm. looking for uh, hmm. forgiveness. They didn't want to go to hell or whatever they were looking for. Sure. And somebody came along and shared with them what that group believed and how that group said it. it's not the biblical one but yeah and the people were loving yeah. and the people were caring and it all made sense yeah and so they went ahead yeah. and did it and they yeah. have then been deceived by somebody else they, yeah. they they didn't deceive themselves so there is a difference there is a difference but yes yeah. in both cases yeah. you can start sharing things yeah. where you, you are sharing deceit Mm. but you don't necessarily know it. Yeah, yeah. I think to a lesser, greater degree, probably less, hopefully lesser, we can, we can all be guilty of that to a Absolutely. degree. To a degree. Absolutely. I mean, I've changed my mind on a lot of issues, actually. But that's yeah. why we need to get in the Word of God, well, isn't it, Richard? Right. And, and talk, talk to each other as it well. Talk, yeah, it talks yeah. about being a mirror. Yeah. And we need to see yeah, what we do. Like. we do. Yeah. Yeah. Right, now, we're getting on to the nitty-gritty, actually, of all these various things. So there are some groups around, which yeah. you know more about than I do, yeah. um, what are some of the groups you would say are deceptive in what they say? Okay. So this is a delicate area. It is, but <laughs> let, let me prefix this by why I right. would say it. Okay. And again, underline what we said at the beginning, it is um, the, the attitude that we have. Yes, I am going to say these people are wrong, but it's the attitude to which we have. Now, I want to preface it by um, what Paul said to the Corinthians in 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Right. And when he, uh, in, in, in verse 4, he's writing back to them and he says, For if a person comes and preaches another Jesus, right. whom we did not preach, or you receive a different spirit, which you had not received, or a different gospel, which you had not accepted, you put up with it splendidly. He's being a little bit sarcastic mm, to them. Sure. Later on down, he, he, he begins to talk about the fact that these people um, are um, simply coming as an angel of light. He says, for such people, these people, mm. are false apostles, deceitful workers, disguising themselves. So we've got false we got deceitful, we got disguising, mm. all of which yes. is in that area of deception that we're right. talking about. And no wonder, for Satan himself is disguised yes. as an angel of light. Yes. So in other words, when we go back and look at it, what, what mm. he is saying is this. Mm. If somebody comes and preaches a different Jesus, yes. if somebody comes and preaches a different gospel, if mm. somebody has a different spirit, yes. watch out. Right. And so where I would go, and, 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 and to me, one of the tests of all the groups, and you can go on reachouttrust.org and you can see all the groups that we're talking about, and I would just mention one or just two. Just want to interrupt you, yeah, okay. if you're watching this. Reach, uh, Doug just mentioned his website, which we should have mentioned before, and I apologise. It's www.reachouttrust.org. And I've been on there, and 
uh, as Doug correctly says, there are a lot of all these different groups and information about all these different groups. And it's actually very useful because, well, I do, for example, I do evangelism on Saturday with our church, and we quite often get people from various groups. And uh, now that I've been on Doug's website, I now know what to say to them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because again, on there, we're not just saying why they're wrong. We go yeah. on to saying yeah. why they're right. But what yeah. the question I'm dealing with now is why they're wrong. But we have yeah. to go on to say why they're right. So what the Word of God tells us, yes. and, and I want to stress that, what the Word of God tells us is we have to be careful of people that preach a different Jesus. So Paul was saying, if anybody comes and preaches a Jesus other than one that I've preached, it's wrong. Yes. Now, that's why a number of those groups, when the people say, what have you got against Jehovah's Witnesses? Yes. I haven't got anything against an individual Jehovah's Witness. Mm. I will talk with them. Um, I, I have a great time with them. I've got a great friend. I, I don't know, mm. if Nick, if you're watching, yeah, <laughs> great watching. And he will come on to it. And we will respect one another. Sure. But I cannot agree with them. Why? Because the Jesus that they preach, I would say, is different to the Jesus here in the gospel. Yes. People say to me, we, we do a number of programs on Mormons. You do. Why? I, I would say because the gospel hmm. that the Mormon preaches, I see, is different to the gospel that we hmm. have in here. Hmm. So in all of these groups, hmm. to me, unless I can show that, I have no reason to talk. Because I, those are the two areas. And hmm. I would encourage everybody, if a group comes to their town, if a group, if, if, if representatives come to their doors and they're not sure, always start by asking these two questions. Who is their Jesus? Mm. And if their Jesus is not God, mm. who came to earth as a God man no. and who died and was buried and rose again and went back to glory as, uh, as, as God, a part of the Godhead, if that's not their Jesus, Mm. Then it's not the Jesus in there. That's very interesting, that actually. Yeah. And then ask yeah. them, how can I be saved? Yes. And if the answer is by doing works or by joining our organization or any shape or form of yeah. that, other than by grace alone through faith, as Ephesians tells us, then it's a different gospel. Mm. And so it's not, you know, it's not that we're coming at, oh, nasty, horrible people don't have it. It's no, we are taking the litmus test. Remember the old litmus test yes, at yes. school? Yeah, yeah, you know, you put the, you know, if it, mm. it put the paper in, if it went sure. pink, it was yeah, acid, yeah, yeah, if it yeah, went yeah, blue, yeah, it was that. alkali. That's what you're doing. Yeah. You're dipping that in and saying, is mm. this group right or mm. not? And that's the way it goes. So I'm, I'm not really interrupting uh, Doug at all. I'm actually emphasizing what he's just been saying. Two really important points, and I hope you pick them up, actually. They're really helpful for me as well, actually. So when we meet these groups on the streets or wherever you do meet them, uh, two things, is there Jesus? the one that they believe in, is it the same as the, as the scriptures? And in, in my experience, when you talk to some of these groups, frankly, their Jesus is very, very different from the Jesus in the scriptures. That's the first thing. And the second thing, uh, you can ask, or I've never thought of this before, before Doug brought it up. I said, if I were to join your organization, whatever it is, whatever group it is, how can I be saved? And if they come up with good works or join our organization or sign this piece of paper, whatever it is, they're barking up the wrong tree, aren't they? Aren't they, Doug? <laughs> and, 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 yeah, and that's exactly what... Now, now I, I mean, I wouldn't necessarily use these words, but Paul goes on hmm. to say, yeah, this is, this is Satan at work. Yeah. Um, now, I don't want people to call these people satanic because no. very often those people are the ones in the category who are deceived themselves. Yeah. And therefore... Once you establish that, you want to tell, give them love. You want to reach out to them. You want to help them. You want to love them and share with them. Give them an opportunity to share with them the truth as you see it. And, and just with the woman at the world, you can accept it or reject it. Yeah. Um, but I think it is, it is vital that as Christians, we don't have a namby-pamby attitude. You know, mm. oh, well, they all talk about Jesus. We should love them. Now, the second part, I agree, you should love them, but what does that mean? Mm. Love is not, oh, I don't worry about it, I accept, that's fine. Love is actually quite short, because love has discipline in it. Sure. Um, yeah. And because I love them, mm. and because I want them to be saved, and again, just think for a minute. Mm. 
if what I've said is true, mm. that that gospel is not the gospel of salvation, that that Jesus is not the Jesus whom you should call upon to be saved, mm. no matter how honest those people, no matter how dedicated those people, they're not saved. That's not saved. Yeah. Now surely, yeah. The one thing you want to do is not to have a go at them of how wrong they are, but you want them to have an opportunity to lead to them saved. into all truth. Amen. Yeah, that's Amen. where we're at. And and so that's that, that again comes back to it. But it but it's important that you you, you and you, you will never preach the gospel to them if mm. you think they're okay. Mm. So if you don't check out their gospel and if you don't check out their Jesus, mm. sure. you might let them go to hell when you yeah. had an opportunity to share truth with them. Now I tell you, the, the group that I encounter most often on the streets in Portsmouth, because our group does, our church does evangelism on the streets, is, is the Jehovah's Witnesses actually. Right. So uh, perhaps you can educate me. If I were to, well I did last Saturday, whenever it was we last went out, we, a Jehovah's Witness says, that, and actually trying to convert me to, to their particular way of thinking, to be, this particular lady wasn't very, very interested in what I had to say at all, no. because she got her, she was like a gramophone record. That's you know? right. That's but right. so, if you were confronted with a gramophone record, <laughs> <laughs> like her, how would you deal with her? Well, you, you, you've got to find, and for each person it, it may be slightly different, but yeah. you, you, you've got to find you know, the, the, the one question that stops them in their tracks. And so, it, it I mean, for me, mm. it, it, it would depend on what they were talking about as to, as, as to yeah. how... Yeah. And usually, if she's just going on, going on, going on, I say, hang on a minute. Love. Yeah. <laughs> I say, look, mm. would, you know, could we just talk about the scripture for a minute? I mean, yeah. forget what you think, yeah. forget what I think. Do you mind if we just get off the gramophone record? I'll be honest about it. Yeah, so, yeah. And, 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 and look at the yeah. scripture. Yeah. And, and usually, I would go to somewhere in John's Gospel, like John chapter 20. Right. Where Jesus comes and Thomas clearly proclaims, and it says, and, and Thomas said to him, mm -hmm. you are my Lord and my God. Now, big G, big G yeah. even in the Jehovah's Witness New World Translation. Right. So if they've got a New World Translation with them, I'd say, look, can you look at that? Tell me, why did Thomas call Jesus God? Big G, which to them that's could good. only mean that's Jehovah. Good. I like that, yes. Um, and they that might really come up good. with all sorts of answers and they will try. I said, but that's not the issue, is it? Clearly, um, and, and very interestingly, if, if they had their kingdom interlinear, that's the one with the Greek underneath. Hmm. And the Greek text which they accept, which may not always be the greatest mm. Greek text, mm. but the one that they accept there, the literal translation is, is Thomas said, you are the Lord of me yes. and the God of me. That's well, the literal translation. Really? So I say, explain that to me, please. Sure. I mean, because here was, here was Thomas going to go out with all the rest of the disciples mm. and preach the gospel. What was he going to preach? Yes. And he was going to preach that Jesus is God. So I would seek to... Now, does that save them? No. But it's, it's putting that question, it's putting mm. that doubt. And you, know, and, and you pray that the Holy Spirit mm. would touch them and worry them. Mm. I, I pray the Holy Spirit is, is a worrier. Mm. And he worries them about that. Mm. That every time they look at that, even though they know the watchtower explanation. <laughs> yes, and true. one of the illustrations I often use yeah. is because they will always read the Bible with watchtower publications. I say, hang on a minute. Supposing you've just got the, uh, the, 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 the Bible in your own language for the first time. Mm -hmm. Okay, You haven't got any books on it. All you've got is the Bible mm. in your own language. Yes. And you read, and Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God, Yes. what are you going to believe? Yes, yeah, quite. <laughs> I said, you can only believe one thing. Puts Thomas is calling Jesus God. And so it's trying to find That's ways actually very helpful, that. to make them see what the Bible is actually saying. Because here is, and I have to say this, I do believe somewhere in the higher up echelons of the organization, there are those people that know the truth, yes. but deliberately find ways of, of, of twisting it. Mm. But to me, the average witness that you meet simply is accepting that. 
Our job is to give them the opportunity sure. to, to question that. If I could uh, put in a couple of little adverts for Doug's website now. Uh, mentioned it before. Um, reachouttrust.org. But actually, um, well, Doug's very generous. Uh, he's actually given our organization two DVDs. One is uh, Reach Out to Jehovah's Witnesses, and the other one is Reach Out to Mormons. Now, um, you won't see it today, but within, I would guess, a week or possibly two weeks, you'll be able to get onto our organization's website, which is called freechristianteaching.org. We don't sell anything. It's everything is free. freechristianteaching.org, and you will be able to, to watch uh, Doug's excellent teaching on reach out to Jehovah's Witnesses and reach out to Mormons. I've actually seen these DVDs and they are really, really helpful. And you'll also be able to, uh, Doug's very kindly agreed to this, um, be able to obtain free DVDs of these excellent teachings. Uh, we're very keen that these teachings should be widely available from people who really know what they're talking about. Uh, on this particular subject, I'm not knowledgeable, very. But uh, we were just having a chat before, and we were just saying, this is about the body of Christ. Uh, there are Amen. one or two things that I know a bit more about, but certainly this is not one of them. And this is why we need individuals. And by the way, this is why we're importing into our free Christian teaching website a whole lot of other teachers on topics which they really know what they're talking about, like Doug. So let's come back to Doug. <laughs> so I just wanted to mention, mention your website once more, because it is so important, but also these, uh, these DVDs. Well, and thank you for that, by I, the way. I think it's important that... I mean, we actually took a decision in Reach Out Trust. We, we actually give far more of our stuff away these days or sell it for cost, you know, if we right. had to pay for it, than we've ever done. And we actually took a, a, a definite decision for the very same reason as you. We want to get that material out there. And mm -hmm. we want people... OK, I don't expect everybody to agree with me, but what I ask them to do is listen to what we say check it up against the Word of God, and if what we're saying is what Scripture is saying, then do it, not because I say it, yes. but because Scripture says Absolutely. it. Absolutely. And I think that is so important. Nobody can argue so with that. So argue with that. Yeah. A question for you, Doug. Go then. Okay. Uh, hi, guys. Great program, but I think this is... Uh, so I've lost them now. <laughs> <laughs> Where have we got to? Oh, dear, I'm so sorry. It's all right. Ah, <laughs> dear, oh, dear. Wait a minute. I've lost them for a second. Here we go. Hi guys, great program. Would you say that the teaching, The Purpose Driven Life, the book, is a subtle twist on the truth? And if so, where does it lead to regards Kelvin? Kelvin, you've asked a very difficult question there. <laughs> oh, where does it, I thought you were going to say, where does it lead to Kelvin? I thought you were getting no, into Kelvin. No, Kelvin's again, Kelvin. there we go. I'll say it again. Okay. <laughs> Hi guys, great program. Would you say that the teaching in the book, The Purpose Driven Life, is a subtle twist on the truth? And if so, where does it lead to? That's the question. Um, the simple answer is that, do I believe it's a subtle twist? Yes. Right. I, I do. Um, and I believe it, it, it leads to a dependence on things rather than on the Lord himself. Um, now, I, I, I think there are all sorts of things in those books which are fine, which are good. I think there are also all sorts of things in those books which the very basis of them I would question. For instance, right at the beginning it said that 40 is always that time where, where it talks of in 40 where God is going to bless. Actually that's not true. 40 is always a time of testing. Mm. Um, and, 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 and so I think we do have to be careful how we look. And one of, I, I guess one of the biggest criticisms that I would have, which I would encourage people to check out, is the use of various different Bibles. Now, mm. there are Bibles which are translations and there are Bibles which are paraphrases. Mm. And what we have to understand is this, a paraphrase is how somebody sees. Now, paraphrases mm. can be really helpful mm. in giving you a new understanding that you haven't seen before but it is not a translation. That's right. And in a lot of the illustrations and scriptures that are used, it uses a paraphrase which sometimes says almost the opposite to what the translation yeah, says. And I think that's my biggest point. It's, it's not always that the points they are making mm. are wrong, but I think the basis on which they, 
they make it can be. Now, having said that, and please, I, I know when you get onto stories like this, you either love them or hate them, and therefore you either love me or hate me because of what I've just said. Mm. I know some people have been blessed mm. through that course, and I no question about that. Mm. But if you're asking me, are there issues in those books? Yes, and you'll find some articles on our website that will explain why sure. uh, we feel that. That's good. If I can just pick you up on one thing, it's not pick you up, it's agreeing with you, actually. I'm, I'm, I'm a great, um, I, I really want to know what the scriptures actually yes. said. And I don't know if you do this, but what I do, I've got a computer program, um, not on this laptop, but at home. And basically you go to the original Greek or the yes. original Hebrew, and not only see what it means, but also see where that word is used. Yes. For, exa for example, in the New Testament, you come across a word and say, well, when Jesus used that word, what did it mean in other places? Absolutely. And then you get, Absolutely. and we, before this program, we were talking about the word genere, Gener which means generation. generation. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't mean a nation, it just means the lifetime of one person. Yes. Uh, I'm not saying my interpretation of that is correct, but it, it is clear but, what the word genere means. And of course, even the English is actually not a, tr a true translation of the original Greek. It can't sure. be, because, you know, genere has right. specific meaning. So I, I, I absolutely agree with you on that And, one. and yeah, and I, I mean, the, you can buy all sorts of programs. There's a great free program out there you could download called eSword. Okay, if oh. you go into Google and just put the, well, letter, to that? the e letter E and then sword, you will find it, uh, and, and there's a lot, and that, that's the one I use, because I'm a skid flint, I don't believe in paying anything. But I want to tell you, it, it's brilliant, and it does exactly that. And you can get all sorts of different translations, right. so you can see the different translations, the paraphrases as well as, as mm. the translations. Uh, it, and then you can go to the Greek word. And i tell you one thing I found that when I started doing that, the number of times I found a unique word in the Greek or in the Hebrew. Hmm. And every time you see that unique word, you know there's something special about that sure. because it's the only time in the whole of the New Testament, if it's Greek, that God allowed that word to be used. Sure. Uh, and Paul especially, when he's really getting going to, to communicate the truth, Yes. Uh, we're getting off the line now. No, no, but, you're doing but, fine. But in actual yeah. fact, this is the answer to deception because what you do is you're going back. And if somebody takes that one word, and, or, mm. or even if it's a word like mm. you say used many times, and puts a totally different meaning on it, because some of these English words do mean... I mean, you know, the famous ones, of course, in, in, in the authorised version with the diver's disease, you know, and all, all the kids, you know, well, you know, what are all these divers got, you know, for this? Yeah. But because we don't <laughs> use the word anymore. <laughs> but, 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 but you find out what that word means. And you've got other words, in, in even some of the more modern translations today, that are used differently. Hmm. What did that word mean in the original translation? Mm. And absolutely, that's part of our protection. Mm. That's part of being able to not to be phased by this, not to think there's a demon under every bush, not to mm. think everybody's out to get me, but, but to go to the word of God and see what those originals say. And absolutely right. Does it take time? No. Yes. Well, well no, it does no. take time. No. I mean, not yeah, a bit of, no, not but not a bit of time. Yeah. In other words, you've got to be prepared to dig a little bit sometimes. Yeah. But I want to tell I mean, the computer programs make it far easier. They do. And, you know, yeah. 10, 20 years ago, you had to get your Strongs and, 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 and your Thayers, well, computer, and, you know, where you can get all that in one, one go now. Actually, I'm really interested in this free program you yeah. mentioned, eSword. eSword. I hadn't heard of that before. Yeah, if you, yeah. You, I think yeah. it's e hyphen sword, but if you Google just eSword, e -E oh, letter E with sword. Well, let's get that on our website too. And uh, yeah. yeah, it's it's yeah. great, and you can get all sorts of add-ons. Occasionally, uh, if if the programs are copyrighted, you have to pay it, the original to the copyright. To you. But there's so much free stuff on there, mm. you don't actually need to get unless yeah. you particularly want some of the copyright stuff. Right. You don't have to get that. Right. Well, look, we've been talking about deception in the church. I'm probably only got about four minutes left. But we just uh, we need to make a little summary of really some of the really important points that Doug has made. And we've got two things here, really. Uh, so first of all, if you're a Christian, just get Doug to, power, to mm -hmm. just sort of to sum up basically 
30 years of, uh, te- of his teaching on this subject. If you're a Christian, how can we protect ourselves, Doug? How we, if you're a Christian, how can you protect If we're a young ourselves? Christian, we don't know too much about the Word of God, make sure you're talking with the people that do know about the Word of God. Right. But as soon as you can, get into the Word and let the Word get into you so that you can take things that other people are saying, especially concerning Jesus, especially concerning salvation. You can check it out in Scripture Mm. so that you can say, they're nice people, but they're wrong because of what's said in Scripture. And that becomes the key issue. So that's the foundation. Um, that's the foundation for and it. And then I think you built on that and said, talk to other people. Absolutely. Talk yeah. to your elders because that's talk what they to are. Fellowship elders. together. Mm. Never, you know, you're going along, you see something in the Word of God that you've never heard. Don't mm. get deceived into thinking that's true. It may be true, mm. but chat it through with other people that have been studying the Word longer. Are there scriptures that will put the lie to this? Or yeah. are there scriptures that would agree? Or never be afraid because... If, 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 the, if the church you're in is a loving, caring church, the elders will never want to put you down. Yeah. They will always want you to come through to fruition. Yes. And therefore, unless they've got to, they won't say, you're wrong, don't do that. <laughs> and they will never say it like that. They will say, well, look, hang on a minute, just wait on that. Go away and think on this hmm. and come back and talk to sure. us again. And it's that care. And the other thing you brought up was these alarm bells. Now, we yep. do get those. I we mean, do. I mean, I've been a Christian for a long time now, but even I get them now. Yes. You get uh, alarm bells sometimes over what's said yes. and sometimes over the way people say it. Yes. And what I say is this. Whenever you get one of those alarm bells, take a step back. Don't be afraid you're going to miss out because mm. God got to hang on for you. Mm. Take a step back. Check it out. Mm. If you find it's true, great, go with it. Hmm. If you find it's not true, you've saved yourself an awful lot of hardship. Yeah. And so it is listening to that still small voice of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Just saying, Ooh, yeah. you know, and, and just, just, just... And that's what he with. does, lead yes. us into all truth, doesn't he? He does. That's, that's his point. That's his yeah. job. That's his job. And, and he wants to do that. Exactly. And, you know, it's very interesting, Elisha, with the storm raging, mm. with the wind blowing, with yeah. the earthquake going yeah. on, he still could hear the still small voice. Now, it took him a while to, mm. to listen to what it was saying, but he could still hear it. Yeah. And that's what we must do. And so, yeah, yeah, we stop, we go back before the Lord. If necessary, we get to a place by ourselves mm. and we listen to what he's mm. saying. Really interesting. So, uh, Reach Out Trust is uh, Doug's charity, and I've been on his website many, many times, and it's really, really helpful. And there's, there's all these different groups and organizations and what they believe in and what they don't believe in and how to confront them and everything else. And remember these three points. Is it in the scriptures? Um, is it in the scriptures? Have you got a, an overall knowledge of the scriptures? Have you listened for those alarm bells and have you talked to your elders? And those are the three foundational yeah, things. Yeah, yeah. Really. and with that, you know, God will be safe because he wants us to be safe. Yeah. He doesn't want us to be deceived. What we mustn't do is put ourselves in a situation where we're going to be. We need to put ourselves in a position of safety in him and in his family. Well, thank you for joining us. We've had a wonderful time listening to Doug. He really is an expert on all these different cults. Do get onto his website, reachouttrust.org. Um, and you, you will be able to see Doug's free teaching as well about Mormons and Jehovah's Witnesses on our own website, which is freechristianteaching.org. Thank you, Doug, for joining us. It's Pleasure. been great thank to you. have you on the show. Thanks, really Thanks great. Richard.